Greetings, everyone. Welcome to my top five arcade games of all time. This is part of my top 20 series, the final installment. And we are going to kick things off with a Bali Midway game. This one's from 1983, I believe. So one year shy of my ultimate favorite year of arcade games, 1984. But still a great game. This is Tapper. Um, and so we are going to start it right up here. So in Tapper, you play a barkeep, and your job is to fill the cups of your patrons. For some reason, um, you know, your patrons are coming at you from multiple uh, doors and multiple bars, um, and your job is to serve them all without accidentally serving too many and having any beer spill on the ground. You also have to pick up spare glasses and pick up tips. When you pick up tips, your crowd is somewhat distracted, which buys you uh, valuable time. And the challenge becomes, of course, um, you know, this is a game that you can either play to get to the next stage or play for points. And if you're playing for points, which is my favorite way to play it, uh, you really want to make sure that you're picking up all of the tips, because that's where the majority of your points are. I'm going to die soon, okay. Uh, there are several versions of this game. Oh, I messed up. Um, there is Tapper, which is a Budweiser deal. There's also a, another beer version of this that I think was exclusive to Japan. And it was sponsored by Suntory, which is another brewery, I guess. Um, this game is a very highly sought-after original cabinet. Um, because it actually features a real beer tap on it, which is pretty neat. Uh, it also has a brass rail at the bottom of the cabinet. So you can get that authentic bar experience. Oh, I thought I'd completed the stage. Oh, I didn't even see those guys up there. So, uh, that was not great. Not a great first performance. I'm gonna see if I can do this better again. You know what? I don't, I'm not entirely sure that the Xbox saves your initials, so I, I won't put too much thought into that. So you can see that the tip is worth 10 times the amount. More than 10 times the amount, especially in these early stages. I am going to endeavor to quickly pass the second stage to show you the bonus stage. But uh, just like Pixels was saying in the chat, this is a ingenious game because it's literally up and down and a button. Um, but the mechanic is, is super, super fun. Um, and um, I think that, you know, there's there's probably been more than a few games, and I've already forgotten which one. I think it's the second from the left. I was opining and not watching properly. Alright. So there's a bonus stage. Pretty neat. Now we go to the fairground. One thing I really like about this game is that all of the enemies, if you can call them that, all of your patrons have such personality. You know, they're they're all drawn, they're all animated well. And this game never really cheats you. Um, you know, if you lose, it's always down to your own ineptitude. Um, I 
Things get real out of control real quick if you don't manage <laughs> correctly. Oh! <laughs> Couldn't make it happen. See you, Darren. See you, free lunch. Right now, I'm being joined in the chat by Pixels at Dawn. Darren Coles was here. Free lunch was just here. Necronom. Uh, so we got a nice little crowd. Watch the final part of uh, the countdown. The next stage after this is a uh, kind of a biker bar type atmosphere. And then the final stage, what I don't think I've ever actually gotten to, is um, an alien deal. <laughs> um, but I am not good enough to get that far. Oh, okay, Darren. Sorry, I misread you there. This is definitely one of these games where um, if you play the console adaptations, they're all much, much easier than the arcade version, um, particularly the, the 2600 uh, version. Uh, it's, it's much easier. Uh, this game also available in non-alcoholic varieties. The uh, Root Beer Tapper uh, is, uh, is one that they would put in the more kid-friendly establishments. And so... Uh, this has been number five, Tapper. Let's go on. Uh, oh. This is going to be every time I look at the list, I'm like, oh, I love this one. Duh, because I, I made the list. So. Uh, this next game is one that is quite controversial among the Amigos community because out of me, Brent, and Aaron, I am the only one that likes this game. This is City Connection. So City Connection is a very neat game. Um, it's a, on the face of it, it looks like a racing game. You're in a car, right? But it's not really a racing game at all. Your job is to literally paint the town green or blue or whatever color. Um, and so you've got this, you're on a multi-level stage here. And each stage represents a different city, which is kind of neat. And your job is to paint all of the stage and not get hit by any of the police. Uh, you do have a projectile. Uh, you can fire oil cans at the police cars. That's one of the best ways to really build up your score. Um, you want to avoid the cat. The cat will make you die. So just oh, And you also want to avoid doing that. If you get that balloon, I believe that it warps you. Um, if you get a certain number, of, you, it warps you to a different zone automatically, which is kind of neat. Yeah, this is this is sort of similar to Bomb Jack. Um, let's see here. So that's what you want to do. You get the um, get the combos where you're knocking off five or six of these police cars at a time. But that cat will spawn without warning and do some damage if you're not careful. The trickiest parts of this is uh, just getting those edges um, and being able to kind of just uh, make sure you're as efficient as possible. Now there isn't a time limit, which is which is great. I'm not a big fan of games with time limits. Uh, I don't even believe that there is any kind of a bonus for completing a stage in a certain amount of time. Uh, I am a fan of this car. Uh, my very first new car um, that I bought soon after I graduated from university was a 2003 um, Volkswagen Golf Coupe. I believe the color was some kind of wacky. It was called like Mojave Brown or something like that. It's clearly a color they were trying to move because uh, it wasn't it wasn't selling real well. 
And, um, but anyway, playing this game always takes me back to that car. That was a real fun car. I only had it about a year before I traded it on another Golf, and one of the worst financial decisions I ever made. But, um, but anyway, it's just another reason why I like this game. A game that figure, uh, features a little hatchback instead of a monster muscle car like so many games do. Uh, it's okay with me in my book. Oh yeah, Carve Up on the Amiga is a clone of City Connection. Uh, Dreamcatch actually just did an article on that not too long ago. Oh. Alright, I'm nearly there. I think this might be the last little piece. Nope. Oh, yeah. So this has very anime-inspired art. This is a... Um, I'm trying to remember. I know that uh, Jalico um, published this on the NES, which is where I first played it. But uh, I can't remember who, who actually did the, the real game. Somebody wants to look that up in the chat, and I would appreciate it, because I can't remember. Um, but the guy on the cover, I remember, of the NES game was smoking a cigarette, and so can't get away with that these days. I think on the Game Over screen, he's also smoking. So this is sort of like Pang in that, you know, it's, you're going around the world as you're playing these different stages, which I like. Alright, it's time to knock some of these. Oh! See? I'm telling you, man. That cat, right where you least expect it. Oh yeah, I guess it's Jalico in the, in the arcades, too. Okay, we're gonna try this again. I know I can do better. So this time it's all business. We're gonna. Oh boy. It's almost the end right there before we even started. Yeah, that cat is it's giant and it's apparently made out of like reinforced steel because um, it destroys your car immediately. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to uh, one day cover, carve up on maybe an arcade port show of Amigos. Uh, but Aaron and Brent just hate this game for some reason. I don't know why. To me, it's got a lot of charm. If you can time it just right, you can get that edge and you can make the jump at the same time. I know it's possible. I'm just not very good. There's that last edge that I need. You get mega points if you can get down there. But I can't get down there without hitting a car on my way down. Oops. There we go. Oh my gosh! Freaking cat. All right, but we're gonna we're gonna finish this off here. See you, Darren. Hope you have a good drive home. All right. Almost done with this stage. Just gotta get this last little bit here. Come up here. Bam. Dreamcast. 
driven all the highway. That's funny, I was playing a little bit of a Euro Truck Simulator last night. How far we've come. <laughs> I don't know that you can draw a direct line between City Connection and Euro Truck Simulator, but I think you kind of can. Trying to get those corners just right. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Euro Truck. Uh, I've uh, I've played it in uh, virtual reality, and to be honest with you, I. I, I was a little bit squeamish, um, so I've gone back to playing it in uh, actual reality or whatever, um, just with the monitor. But it's it's a great game to play right before you go to bed because it's just so relaxing. And I don't I don't play any music or anything. It's just the sound of the engine and um, slowly building my my truck empire. There's the balloon. I need to catch that balloon. Out of the way. Jump. There we go. Oh, boy. That was that was very close. <laughs> Oh, there's a spike there. So apparently, you know, once you once you go so far, the, the level will start spawning spikes on you. Okay. Just finishing this up here. I'm trying to think of what the next stage is. I want to say it's somewhere in Asia, I think. A little bit of edge is uh, challenging. Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, it it didn't make me as ill as um, oh, Dazzly asked if I, I'd played Elite Dangerous in VR, and I have. Um, it didn't make me quite as squeamish, but I also I didn't like. Um, I was just a little bit off in how I was sitting and how my character was sitting. So when I look down, it wouldn't look quite right. But if you have the proper HOTAS setup, that is definitely the way to play Elite. Um, talk about an immersive experience. Um, I haven't played Elite in a long time though. Um, I sold my Oculus uh, this summer to pay for some medical bills and um, and I haven't played Elite since before I, I sold my Oculus, so it's been a while for sure. Here's my balloon. Oh yeah, Paris, okay. Backgrounds are just beautiful, though. It's one of my favorite parts of the game. Just how pretty they are. Oh boy, well, I'm glad I didn't make that jump because that would have been it for me. This 
See you, Pixels. Have a great time at badminton. I think I might have just gotten an extra life. Ooh. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to hang out on that bottom ledge too too much or you will uh, be impaled. Okay. Now, I don't think I've ever gotten past this stage. Um, I don't recall anything past the third stage. So, we'll see how this goes. It becomes more and more difficult to jump between the levels, the way that the, 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 they draw the platforms on the stage. That has something to do with it, because it's not always an, an open gap to where you need to go. Let's go back. Last little ledge there. Pop back up. This is really a game that you can stretch a quarter. Um, you can play for quite a bit of time, unless you die, like I did. So anyway, that was City Connection. Um, I'm the number seven top pointer. Okay, moving on to number three. This is the earliest game, I believe, in the countdown. Uh... This is a universal game called Ladybug. Uh, Ladybug is a maze um, type game. Um, it's so, you know it's 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 Pac-Man with a couple extra levels of things going on. Um, it's not fair to call it a Pac-Man clone because it's it's so much different. But it is it is a top-down maze game. So, I mean, there's that. And so, what you want to do is you want to collect these hearts when they're blue. Um... And then collect the uh, the letters. Um, Brent is a great hand at Ladybug, um, and he's he's really the master of this. Um, this this has you know these gates that you can see here. Oh boy! And so you can kind of play on the defense and and set yourself up so you're not going to be hit by these things as much as you can. And once these guys all leave the pen, um, there will be a fruit that appears. And, uh, and there is friendly fire, so if those bugs hit the uh, skulls, they will die. I always thought was cool. Oh, oh boy. He could have killed me and he didn't. Hey, Pishbot. I haven't seen you in forever, man. Yeah, right. Necronom. Uh, uh, Ladybird is... Uh, in America, when we think Ladybird, we actually think about uh, a dog. Uh, one of the former presidents of the United States had a dog named Ladybird. Um, I want to say that it was Lyndon Johnson, but I'm not sure. Um, so that's what most people, I think, in the States think of when they hear Ladybird, because we call this insect a ladybug, as it were. So the idea is that you want to get up to the times five as soon as possible. 
Whoa! And oh man, the AI is sometimes <laughs> suspect in this in this game in your favor. Um, oh boy, I'm not gonna escape that though. Like I said, I'm not great at this game, but I can recognize the amount of skill that you need to really be good at it. And so ideally what you do is you camp around those letters, and when they're red, that's when you get them. Because then they're worth five times the amount of points. You know, spelling special earns you a free game, which isn't that important when you're playing on main. Um, oh, it's all about the points. Yeah, this is it's a very challenging game. All right, I like the uh, the name selection thing too. It's cool. All right, let's try it again. That's interesting, Paul Drelbs. I've not heard of that one. Now we just want to camp, get these things all around here as much as we can, and hopefully... Oh, I missed it! I mean, you only get a couple frames before it's too late. Hmm, missed it again. Ha ha! Ha ha! Try again here. Hey, Lobster Terminator, how's it going, man? Oh, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> hey, Trey Guard. I haven't seen you in a while, Trey Guard. How you been? Another thing I haven't seen since in the two games that I've played, I haven't exhausted. Oh. There's the end of the first stage. I'm wondering. Okay, that, yeah, you don't want that. So. Definitely want to get the hearts first. We want to get the hearts when they're blue. It's beautiful here in the States today. Um, it's like 60 degrees. Um, my wife and I were out um, distributing some uh, Thanksgiving meals to the uh, less fortunate this morning, and we just couldn't believe how warm it was. It was, uh, oh boy, oh boy. Um, it felt more like April than November. Yeah, it's that friendly fire I was telling you about. Come on, come on. Oh, oh. Oh. Well, I, I wish you luck, Trey Guard. Maybe your new job will be even better than your last. These guys, these mantis things, they're no good. No good at all. All right, so that's Ladybug. Uh, that is my number three game of all time. Um, really, really great maze game for sure. Um, now we move on, excuse me, to number two, Neo Turf Masters. So this is the probably the newest game on the list. 
1996. And this is without a doubt the greatest arcade golf game of all time. Yeah, Trey Guard, we are, uh, I am closer <laughs> to where you are. Um, not quite, but almost closer to where you are to, than to where the, the fires are. They're all the way over on the West Coast. Thank goodness, because, um, yeah, it's, it's real bad. Um, in West Virginia, we don't get a lot of wildfires because our weather isn't dry enough. Um, I have no idea what it is about the climate in California that, that causes the, uh, that, that to happen so frequently. So anyway, uh, Neo Turf Masters. This game's got everything. It's got great music. The controls are great. The graphics are beautiful. Um, it's a simple game. So I always like to play the technician. I'm playing Japan. Yeah, you're not kidding, Pishbot. Alright. So, this is your typical gauge. Uh, you've got uh, a swing meter and then a sort of accuracy meter, like the impact. Um, club selection is easy. So, uh, we are 160 yard, 163 away. The 5 iron will get us almost there. When? Yeah, I think that we're going to do pretty well if we hit this pretty much full on. That should get us on the green. Okay. And again, putting is super easy. Um, of course, the, the holes, the greens do get more challenging, but the interface itself, it's not bad. And so if you make all birdies, you can pretty much play nine holes on a quarter. Um, I'm not going to play all nine holes, obviously. It would be too much, but I did want to play two or three holes, just to give you an idea of the greatness that is Neo Turf Masters. Well, oh, in the rough. Okay, so here we need to be more careful. Maybe we need to hit. I guess a one iron is going to be our best bet in the rough. Oof, right in the bunker. Okay, 39 yards, so we want to hit it probably about right there. Maybe hit it, well, I meant to hit it a little low, but. Okay, could be worse. I think I've got a straight shot. There's no green. All right. So par gets you nothing, um, but you don't lose any uh, any holes. I've still got two free holes to play. I'll do one more hole. Okay, so we're going over the water here, 200 yards. You might want to bump it up and then hit it a little bit short. See how that goes. Ooh, that's going to be tricky because I got to go up and down. Too much, too much, but could have been worse. I do like that you can hit it on its way back down too. Bam. All right, so that was Neo Turf Masters. Um, I, say, I think it's the greatest golf game for the arcades ever. Nice uh, Neo Geo title. So uh, we will move on to the final game, the number one game of all time, in my view. Um, if you know me at all, you know this is my favorite arcade game. I've played more of this game than any other game um, since, since I found out about MAME. 
Uh, this is, where is it? Right here. Do run run. So this is the third Mr. Do title that was released by Universal. This was released in the glorious year of 1984. And it combines, in my view, the best part of the first game with uh, extra stuff. Um, so you're still collecting things, there's still monsters, but there's no maze. You're, you're free to go wherever and do, you know, go wherever you want. And there's multiple ways to score, there's multiple ways to clear levels, and that's that's very welcome to me. Uh, I enjoy it when the game gives you options. So you've got, oops, way off to the races. Um, you've got a ball, just like in the first game. Uh, the ball is a little bit less skittish and all over the place in this version. It pretty much always goes straight. Um, when you collect these dots, uh, your ball builds back up. That's how you build your ball back up. Um, you've got those logs, and when you, as you can see, you're, you're leaving a kicks style square or a line behind you. When you complete squares around the power pellets, they upgrade to be worth more points. So you can play this game a couple different ways. Um, you can constantly make circles around a small area and, uh, you know, make your points that way. This is, this is sketchy. I need to hit this and that will freeze the board. And then if I come over here, oh boy, oh, that didn't work. Um, you can eliminate monsters just, you know, as fast as you want and try and get to, to, to later stages. Uh, what I found is that if you make one lap or two laps and you get the, the, the pair, I don't know if those are, they're peaches, peaches and, and uh, you get it to, to cherries or peaches and then collect some and then defeat the monsters. But by far the best way to rack up a high score in this game is to uh, maneuver as many of the enemies as possible under one of these logs and then crush them all uh, at the same time, which can be a challenge because they... It's kind of like herding cats, um, and uh, obviously I'm a little bit better <laughs> at this when I'm not giving a running commentary, but it's also an excuse. I, I even on my best days, I'm sure that I'm nowhere close to being one of the best in the world in this. Oh shoot! So my all-time high score, I think I, I, I've gotten pretty close to 200,000 in this before. And of course, just like every other Universal game, collecting extra will give you an extra life. The music for this, I think, is very good. Go ahead and hit that. Oh. All right, so that, that was a good warm-up game. We'll play for real this time. I like the, uh, again, I like the, the name entry screen, and this is it's pretty cool. Um, I like anything that's not just like, you know, a rolling number thing, you know, and you just, they put some thought into it. All right. So we'll do this one more time. Maybe. Oh, I think I accidentally left the game. We'll go back into it one more time. I was trying to hit select to enter a credit. And... There we go. Okay. So it's for real this time. So ideally you want to crush at least three. That'll give you the, the max 3,000 and then each additional one you crush after that is still 3,000. There we go. Or 2,000. Sorry. 2,000. 
And when there's only one guy left, then you can kind of pick up the pieces a little bit and uh, get some extra points by making the squares and upgrading. Hopeful. Get this lemon. Right. So that's 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 your typical stage right there. Okay. Oh, and then your ball also is, acts as a multiplier. So if you can get it to bounce back and forth, it'll keep multiplying up to 2,000 points. So like this will give me 1,000. So it's yet another way to score points in this game. Now ideally what we want to do is trap all these guys and... Oh, shoot. That would have worked perfectly if they hadn't chosen that precise moment to change color on me. Now I'm going to be in trouble because I got no more logs left and three guys to kill. My ball is come over there. All right, let's get rid of one right now. The cutscene where you win an extra Mr. Do is really cool too. Uh, he goes into a house and then two of them come out or something like, or no, it's all the extras go into a house and one Mr. Do comes out. It's, I don't know, I think it's cool. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I guess it does go above. I guess it, it does go up to 3,000. I thought that was the case. This was not 100% sure. Oh! And see, sometimes you just get killed like that. Oh, that's no good. Maybe it didn't actually take away that life, though. I might, have, I might have caught a lucky break there. <sighs> that was my own fault. It's really difficult, you know, in a stage like this where there's these... The log is close to a hill. You can't really herd the enemies as much as you might like. Come on, guy. There we go. Two more letters for that elusive extra guy. Collect some bonus points. Oh boy, almost walked right into him there. Come on. And they will get smarter. The enemies do get smarter. They'll pause. And, uh... And just stop and, and, and get out of the way. Oh, man. Sometimes that quick turn just doesn't, doesn't do it. Um, so where is your cousin Stan right now, Pishbot?
Well, that's how it goes sometimes. So anyway, I'd say that's that's a pretty average game of do run run for me. You know, sometimes I just get on a tear and 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 do really well, but this was not one of those times. This was an average game. So. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, look at my top 20 favorite arcade games of all time. Um, I plan on doing the similar series with all my favorite systems, the, uh, the uh, Atari 8-bits, the NES, uh, Super Nintendo, heck, I may even do one on the Amiga. So, um, again, thank you for watching, and I will see you again uh, soon. Adios. Um, so I am actually going to leave.